Okay, welcome back everyone. In this video we're going to talk about a couple of different things. We're going to look at the motion of charged particles in magnetic fields and then we're going to look at the magnetic field of a wire itself. Not what happens to a wire in a field, but the magnetic field that a wire itself produces. And then we'll talk about forces between two wires. So we're going to open this up with an example problem. We have a charge that has mass m and charge q, and it's moving at a speed v at a right angle to the magnetic field b, which is coming out of the page. We want to derive an expression for the path of the particle as a function of charge, mass, speed, and magnetic field strength. So the first thing that we want to do is to try to think about the direction of the magnetic force. And remembering that the magnetic force as a vector is equal to QV cross B, we use our fingers and point them to the right for the right hand rule. Our palm must point out of the page, so coming towards us, and our thumb will therefore be pointing downwards. So the direction of this force is downwards. And so what's going to happen is that this is actually going to cause a circular path because V is perpendicular to F. That is the condition for uniform circular motion. And this is something that we talked about way back in chapter 5 um, in mechanics, but we also discussed this during gravity. So if you weren't with us for mechanics, just understand that whenever V is perpendicular to F, it's going to cause a circular path. And that's because V is really delta X delta T. Okay? And the force causes an acceleration, a small delta V if you will, that means that a small time later, the particle is right here. Now, it will then experience a force like this. And if its velocity is like that, it will have a small delta V pointing inwards. So in other words, the force will continually pull this particle into a circular path. And we can find the uh, radius of this path by recognizing that the magnetic force is the centripetal force. So because everything is at a right angle, we can just write that as QVB. That has to be equal to the centripetal force, which is MA, which is MV squared over R. So let's say that R is the radius of our path here. Then we can easily solve this for either the radius of the path if we want. R is equal to MV over QB. Or we could solve for the speed. So that would be QBR over M. And these are all correct if you do unit analysis. We're not going to do that now, but they are. And you, I invite you to check that if you're curious. So now we can look at the paths of charged particles in magnetic field. And the first thing that we saw was the circle when the velocity is perpendicular to the field. Okay, so that's the velocity and if the field is going into the page, for example. You can also have a straight line when the velocity is parallel to the field. And we saw this previously, but if V is parallel to B, then the magnetic force is zero. And so there's no change to the path. And finally, you can have a helix. Now, a helix is when you have a velocity that has a component parallel to the field. So take this first diagram up here of this circular path and imagine that you're going to take that and rotate it 90 degrees so that you're looking at it kind of face on. But, you know, imagine that you're looking at the top of a cylinder. So therefore, if you have a component of velocity, maybe VZ, which is going into the page, then what's going to happen is that it's going to spiral because we're trying to make a circle. But as we're trying to make a circle, we also have a component of velocity, Vz, 
going this way. Okay, so it does have sort of VXY, which is what this is, in a plane. But to make a helix, you need a component of the velocity parallel to the field. All right, so take a look at these and see if you can determine what can you figure out about the sign of the charge of each particle. Pause the video and write down your thoughts. Okay, so if you guess that one is positive, two is negative, and three is neutral, you're right. So why is that? Well, for the first one, if we have B going into the page and V going this way. Your fingers go up, your palm, uh, sorry, your fingers go up, your palm points into the page, and your thumb points to the left. See, even I have to think about the right hand rule at times, which means that the force is pointing inwards and you're going to have circular motion. The negative one is the opposite. You have V going up, but you have B into the page. And if you do that, you're gonna have a force which is going out, but that can't be right because the path is this way. So you need that you have, you know that you need a negative sign to make that correct. And then three is neutral because the path isn't changing. So there is no force on it. Okay, now one application of this is what we call a velocity filter. And this is when you have electric and magnetic fields that are crossed or they're in the same place at the same time. So imagine that you have a positive charge with a velocity of V and you have an electric field pointing down and a magnetic field pointing into the page. So what would be the magnetic and electric forces on this positive charge? Well, the electric force goes with the field, F equals QE. Okay, and the magnetic force, well, let's see, we point our finger to the right, our palm has to face down into the page, so that means that the magnetic force has to point up, and that's equal to QVB. And if it's to go in a straight line, then we know that the magnetic force must equal the electric force, or QVB is equal to QE. And that means that the velocity of this is E over B. That's why it's known as a velocity filter, because if you want a particle that has a specific velocity, you just set the electric field and magnetic field to certain values using other means. So does it work for a negative particle? Sure you just have opposite directions. You have magnetic force and you have electric force. So it works exactly the same. Okay, so we're gonna stop here and in our next video, we're, we're going to look at the magnetic field of a wire itself. So we didn't quite get as far as we wanted to, but, but that's okay, we're gonna split things up.